join the church from December 2020 to March this year, we invite you to register for New Members Meet and Greet Friday, April 16th. RSVP at newmember.tcww.org. My friend has a beautifully manicured lawn with stepping stones to keep pedestrians off her grass. And each stone is strategically placed to form a guided path from the street curb to her front door. I invite you to join me for the Master Life Study, Order My Steps, a six-session study that will empower you to walk the path ordered by God. Our Father has graciously chartered the path for each of our lives, and He wants to guide us safely through the valleys, over the mountains, and down the path to righteousness. If you want to live a life that is guided by the Good Shepherd, then join me beginning March 20th for the study Order My Step. Visit women.tcww.org. I look forward to taking the journey with you. Coffee and Christ is a Church Without Walls Bible study. You'll personally engage with sermons I preach on Sunday to discover for yourselves how to authentically live out what the Bible says it means. The name Coffee and Christ expresses the relaxed and conversational small group atmosphere. Grab a cup of coffee or tea and join us on Tuesdays at 7 o'clock p.m. Small groups be encouraged. Journey with us on the road to resurrection, the path that Jesus took to change the world. On March 28th, Palm Sunday, we'll celebrate the triumphant entry of Jesus Christ into Jerusalem. Monday through Friday, we'll share moments to remember, the day of testing, teaching, transition, trials, and then the day of tragedy on Friday, April 2nd, before our Good Friday worship service as we remember the ultimate sacrifice that Jesus made on the cross at Calvary. An early Sunday resurrection morning, we'll celebrate our risen Savior on Easter Sunday. Be sure to invite your friends and family, especially those who do not know Jesus Christ. Let's travel together on the road to resurrection.
Let us pray. Almighty God, you are the light and life of every soul and our only source of hope. Grant that in this time of worship, we may experience your transforming power preparing us for the ministry of this day. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. The Old Testament reading is Zechariah chapter 9 through 9, verse 13. Rejoice greatly, daughter of Zion, shout, daughter of Jerusalem, see your king comes to you, righteousness and victorious, lowly and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. I will take away the chariots from Ephraim, and the war house from Jerusalem, and the battle bow will be broken. He will proclaim peace, in the, peace to the nations. His rule will extend from sea to sea, and from the river, from the free your prisoners, from the river to the end of the earth. As for you, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will free your prisoners from the wireless, from the wireless pit. Return to your fortress, your fortress, your prisoners of hope. Even now I announce that I will restore twice as much to you. I will bend to Judah as I bend my bow and fill it with Ephraim. I will, I will rose your sons, Zion against your sons, Greece, and make you like a warrior sword. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. The New Testament reading is Mark 11, verse 1 through 11. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethpage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and just as you enter it, you will find a cloth tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie and bring it and bring it here. If anyone asks you why are you doing this, say the Lord needs it and will send it back here shortly. They went they went and found a cloak outside in the street tied at a doorway. As they untied it, some people standing there asked, What are you doing untying that cloak? They answered as Jesus has told them to, and the people let them go. When they brought the, clo the cloak to Jesus and threw their cloaks over it, he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, while others spread branches they had cut in the fields. Those who went ahead and those who followed shouted, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna is the highest heaven. Jesus entered Jerusalem and went into the temple, temple courts. He looked around at everything, but since it was already late, he went out to the Bethany with the Twelve. This is the word of God. Thanks to thanks be to God. Holy God, on this day of great rejoicing, Lord Jesus Christ, when we welcome you as our King and Savior, we also walk in the shadow of your cross. Blessed are you who come in God's name to save us. Strengthen our faith on this Palm Sunday so we can call out to you with heartfelt praise. Give us the grace and the courage to follow you this holy week for allowing Jesus to take our human nature, suffering death upon the cross to resurrection, from darkness to the fullness of light. This was the ultimate gift of your endless love. Holy Father, only you can calm a painful soul. We ask you to release your healing power of mercy and grace to families who have lost loved ones during these turbulent days. We pray that as you fold their hearts into your breast, they will receive peace and comfort. 
Almighty God, we thank you for the shepherd of this house, Pastor Ralph Douglas West, Sister Sherita, and their family. Father, continue to bless them and order their steps. We pray for our church leadership, staff, congregation, first-time friends, and guests. With hearts of gratitude, we pray these blessings in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the all in the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen.
Hosanna to God in the highest. Can we just give the Lord a hand and clap of praise on this amazing and wonderful Palm Sunday? Good morning to you, Church Without Walls, and thank you for bringing God's house into your house. We certainly like to welcome all of you who are worshiping and streaming with us this morning and would ask that our church family would please make sure that you like and share and invite others to attend worship with you, whether you're streaming on our app or streaming on our social media pages, YouTube, or even the Church Without Walls website. Invite someone else to worship with you and celebrate on this Palm Sunday. We also want to say uh, thank you so much for those who stream and worship with us each and every week uh, through our international audience. We want to welcome those who are streaming from Angola and South Africa, from Canada and Panama, from Switzerland and Norway, all over the world, they worship with us here at the Church Without Walls. Let's celebrate our international audience. Amen. Thank you so much, Janaya, for that beautiful dance this morning in celebration of Palm Sunday. And guess what, family? We look forward to an exciting, exciting week uh, as we are on the road to resurrection. Amen. So every day at 12 noon, you will be able to join us uh, in devotion and in prayer. And you can go to the Church Without Walls website, R2R at tc.tcww.org and click the link to join us each and every day on the road to resurrection as we study and prayer and devotion together. And then we invite you to join us Thursday live on all of our platforms as our very own Pastor Ralph Douglas West will be leading us for Monday, Thursday service and Holy Communion. So while you're at work, make sure that you take your communion with you and then go to the website at live.tcww.org and join us as we come together to the Lord's table. And then come back and join us live again on Good Friday at 12 noon as our very own Reverend Ralph West II will be preaching our Good Friday worship service. We look forward to an exciting week as we're on the road to resurrection leading up to Easter resurrection service. Amen? Amen. Amen. And church family, we want to take a moment to celebrate uh, Larry and Claudine Mouton, who are celebrating 56 years in marriage. 56 years. We thank God for them. We are excited to announce a new partnership today. Uh, we, you know, we've been working really hard in this COVID-19 season, and we're excited to partner with Walgreens. Walgreens in the city of Houston uh, will be on our campus, the Eldridge campus, April the 10th. Uh, registration will be required, but we will be giving out uh, COVID-19 vaccines. Amen? Amen. We're excited about that. So stay tuned. Again, don't just show up. Registration will be required, and we will be sending that link out to you very soon, so make sure that you are connected to the TCWW email so that you can get the link. And guess what? There are no restrictions, no restrictions whatsoever. So if you've been waiting to get your vaccine, there will be over 1,500 vaccines available, uh, again, with the partnership with Walgreens in the city of Houston, so we're grateful for that. We're still partnering with the Harris County uh, Better Together uh, health campaign through COVID-19. So please make sure that you're wearing your mask, practicing social distancing, using hand sanitizer, and do all that you can uh, to support and help others as we show social distance. And then last but not least, thank you again, Church Without Walls, so much for your continuous support of our disaster relief and recovery efforts as we continue to help families get back into their homes. God's blessings upon each of you, and peace be unto you.
This is the day the Lord has made. We rejoice and we are glad in it. On this Palm Sunday, as the church universal pauses to celebrate the coming of our King who has come to us in the past, who comes to us in the present, and one day who shall call us together in that grand reunion where we shall reign with our Lord. We celebrate the King of Kings, and the Lord of Lords. On this day where you are, would you bow your heads with me and focus your attention on this King of whom we have read about this morning and we have prayed to and sang praises to. With heads bowed and eyes closed, shall we pray. O oh God, we thank you that you have not treated us as we deserve. We thank you that though you are creator, judge, and king, you are also father, so that though we are wandering children, there's always a road back to our father's house. You have spoken to us in the voice of conscience, in the words of your book, in the prompting of your Holy Spirit, and yet we have not obeyed your voice. You have shown us the best in the ideals which still haunt us, in the life and example of godly men, in the pattern of Jesus, and yet we have not followed it. You've tried to teach us in the events of history, in the experiences of life, in the wisdom of the sages, the prophets, and the saints, and yet we have not learned your lessons. You've called us to the life of love, to the forgiving of each other, to the helping of those in need, to the caring which is like your care, and yet we have lived in bitterness, in selfishness, and in heedlessness, of the appeals of need. We have nothing in our hands to bring. We have no merits of our own. There is no plea of self-defense that we can offer. So above all else, we thank you for Jesus Christ, our Savior who died, that we might be forgiven. So for his sake, Hear us as we say, God be merciful to me, a sinner. And when you hear, forgive and save us. This we ask on this Palm Sunday, for your sake, Jesus, and all God's people say together, Amen.
Lord, we thank you. Thank you for being the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Thank you for days like this to remind us that as you entered in to present yourself as King, you are the King who is able to enter into our lives and rearrange our circumstances. Lord, this morning, open our minds and our hearts to receive your word afresh. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning and happy Palm Sunday. Last Sunday, we celebrated the reality of the king is here. But on this Sunday, we wrestle with the question, what kind of king is this? Open your Bibles to the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 21, beginning at verse 1. I'm reading from the New King James Version. Now when they drew near Jerusalem and came to Bethage, at the Mount of Olives, then Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village opposite you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Loose them and bring them to me. And if anyone says anything to you, you shall say the Lord has need of them. And immediately he will send them. All of this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Behold, your king is coming to you, meek and sitting on a donkey, a coat the fowl of a donkey. So the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them. They brought the donkey and the coat and laid their clothes on them and set him on them. And a very great multitude sp spread their clothes on the road. Others cut down branches from the trees and spread them on the road. Then the multitudes who went before those who followed cried out, saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna. And when he had come to Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, Who is this? I want to tag this text this morning. What kind of king is this? This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Throughout history, and even recently, we could note that there are some strange parades around. <laughs> Coney Island, every year they have a parade filled with thousands of people uh, dressed as mermaids and mermen celebrating the sea creatures. <laughs> Even in Houston, Texas, there's a strange parade that celebrates creativity and artistry decorating cars. There's even a parade <clears throat> that's known as the largest blonde parade where women with blonde hair wear pink and white clothing. <laughs> I guess to celebrate that blondes really do have fun. <laughs> even in Scotland, on December 3rd every year, people crowd the streets to celebrate Hagami. It includes the festivals of the world-famous torches, thousands of people proceeding through the streets, carrying wax torches to create a river of fire down the Royal Mile. Throughout the week, there's festivities such as parties and, <clears throat> and concerts, all with the expectation and anticipation of a brand new year. 
On this day, on this Palm Sunday, we celebrate no sea creatures, no creativity, not just a new year, but on this day we celebrate the one who brings about not just a new way of living, but gives us a new life. In the most creative way possible on this day, this king shows that he brings about new life to you and I by entering into our lives, entering into our worlds, and rearranging all of our circumstances. The Gospel of Matthew, chapter 21, we ask the question, what kind of king is this? On this day, Jesus boldly and brazenly presents himself as the king. Is now the end of what we read throughout the Gospels, the Messianic secret. After he would perform a miracle, he would tell the people who experienced the miracle, tell no one, tell no one, tell no one. But now the secret is out. Jesus is entering into Jerusalem, pronouncing himself as king. You notice it. In the very beginning of the instructions in chapter 21, as he gives his disciples, he gives these clear instructions. And throughout these next verses, it's filled with significance and symbolism and suggestiveness to point to what kind of king he is. There's an atmosphere of anticipation and expectation, but Jesus is going to communicate to them, to you and to I, Clearly, what kind of king he is. And in the beginning of his instruction, he says to two of his disciples, he says, go find and bring. He speaks now with regal and royal authority. As he tells them this, he says, go find a donkey and with it a colt and go find it, loose it, bring it to me. But it gives them a warning. Someone might attempt to challenge you. And when they challenge you, you tell them the Lord has need of it. Never has Jesus addressed himself in these terms. Heaven, the angels might have been wondering about it. And the disciples likely were astonished by it. Because now he is now coming out pronouncing himself as king and never has he addressed himself until now as Lord Jehovah. Go, find, loose, and bring it to me. And in that language, it's the language of a king that says that the king can impress any beast anywhere into his service, into his kingdom At any time, he is now speaking as the one who is God, who owns the cattle on a thousand hills. What kind of king is this? Kings would look for an unsettled virgin donkey. This isn't unusual, but a colt. Bring the colt with you as well. Go find, loose it, and bring the donkey and the colt. We understand the donkey, but why the colt? This untamed, this wild animal. Why in the world would he bring a colt to a parade? This wild, untamed, undomesticated animal. And if anything, don't bring this wild, undomesticated animal to the parade. It could cause all kind of chaos. But what it says about Jesus, the kind of king he is, he can find use in those others view as useless. Not just about a cult, but he's speaking about you and I. He's the kind of king that can find use in people who are undervalued, people who seem to be underestimated, people who are looked over. He can find use in those who are deemed useless. We've seen this before. (laughs) Nigel Reynolds, over 20 years later, is still angry with himself because after he read this novel in the first of many series he saw it as 
unsuccessful and useless. And he threw the book away. And the author was J.K. Rowling, the author of Harry Potter. <laughs> Another gentleman in the United Kingdom, his name is James Howell. He's still weeping over discarding hard drive disks that he had thrown away only to realize days later had he had thrown away over four million pounds of Bitcoin and the money is lost forever because it was locked by a security code. If people can throw away things that are looked upon as useless and unuseful, what more can God do with people that have deemed themselves by everyone else who are said to be useless and have no use because of their background, because of their pedigree? God says, I can find use out of those who are deemed useless. Some people have counted themselves out right now this morning says that God can't do anything with me because I don't have a certain education. He can find use in you. God can't do anything with me because I didn't come out of a certain family. God can find use in you. People say I can't be useful because I don't have a certain type of economic status. God says I can use you. All I need you to do is be available. If you are available, God can find use for you. He can use you. What kind of king is this? It's the kind of king that can find use. Those who are deemed useless. As the disciples bring the donkey and the cult to Jesus. Jesus is on his way to Jerusalem. And as he makes the turn from the Mount of Olives. Jesus from his very entry is highly suggestive. As he's coming on that road, it's a 3,000 mile ascent, 17 miles. And as he's traveling up this road, it's no accident because Alexander the Great traveled up that road. There were several other conquerors that traveled that very same road the Roman general Pompey came up that same road to annex Jerusalem and the land of the Jews to be part of Rome. On that same road, the haughty Hagrid would come up that same road after Jesus does to destroy Jerusalem. But what kind of king is this? I wonder as he's making the turn and he sees the Mount of Olives. And as he makes the turn... And he looks out, I wonder if with his eyes and his mind, he's thinking days down the road where in the Mount of Olives, in <laughs> that crushing place, the night before the crucifixion, he would see that garden where he would pray, asking his father to let this cup pass from me. I wonder as he's traveling up the road, he sees that skull, that mountain that looks like a skull, thinking days ahead on Friday how he would be crucified on the cross. What kind of king is this? As he's traveling up the road on the ascent, people are screaming out, shouting. It's a crowd filled with people, not of high-ranking officials, no, not of noblemen, no. It is a crowd filled with peasants, filled with people on the outskirts of life, people who are on the margin, who are living in poverty, people who are fishermen who have raggedy clothes, fishermen who have smelly garments, throwing them on the ground, screaming out in praises in anticipating that this king would be the king that would come and overthrow the Roman government. What kind of king is this? As he's coming with a colt and a donkey, it's not strange to see a king as he's coming in on a donkey, an unridden, a virgin donkey. This isn't strange. I'm more than sure the thinking Jews thought back 
to the days of the lesser son of David, Solomon, when he came in on a donkey. But Jesus, who is the greater son of David, he's coming in now on a donkey. But those donkeys in the east were known as the beast of burden. What kind of king is this? He is the king that has come to bear the burdens of his people. Other kings, they've come to place burdens on their people. But this king, he comes to bear the burdens of his people. Other kings oppress their subjects. But this king takes upon the oppression of his subjects. Other kings, they send out their servants to die, but this king, he dies in the place of his servants. What kind of king is this? He's the king that bears our burden. And if no other reason, we ought to say thank you, Lord, for being a God who is a king that will bear our burdens. You are the one that says, I can cast my cares upon you because you care about us. He's the king that cares, but he's the king that bears your burden. He's a heavy load bearer and a load sharer. He's the kind of king that bears the burdens of his people. What kind of king is this? While Jesus is riding up that road and the crowds are all around. You have it a street field with peasants. You have people who the Romans or Greeks would say is a rather pathetic company. <laughs> Look at these people. You have fishermen screaming out. You have people who are on the margins of life. Some would deem this was a rather pathetic parade. There was no aristocracy in this crowd. This is people who are on the outskirts and the margins of life. What kind of king is this? As everyone is screaming, laying down their garments, he shows us what kind of king he is. He's the kind of king that has a prophetic consciousness that keeps his promises. You see what is happening here it's the fulfillment of the prophet Zechariah. Tell the daughter of Zion, Behold, your king is coming to you, meek and sitting on a donkey, a colt, the fowl of a donkey. This is the prophecy given by the prophet Zechariah in 9 and 9. What we're seeing right now is the anticipation and the expectation that was given 500 years earlier, five centuries later, the people have been sitting on that promise and that prophecy. And on that day, they were literally witnessing and experiencing the fulfillment of the word of God. What kind of king is this? 500 years ago, this prophecy had come, but what has happened between then and now? The Babylonians came in and destroyed it. What happened between then and now? The Persians came in. Alexander the Great came in. The Maccabeans came in. And 500 years after the prophecy, where it has been dust and destruction, where it might have been forgotten all about in antiquity, but then on this Palm Sunday, we see King Jesus fulfilling his promise five centuries later. If nothing else, we have a God that fulfills his promises no matter what happens between the time he gives it and the time he fulfills it. He's the one that's always going to keep it. Some people allow circumstances, destruction, and darkness to dismay them from keeping their promises. But we serve a God that says, if I said it, it's already done. All you have to do is wait on it. He's the king that keeps his promises. That promise that came 
Zechariah gives this prophecy 500 years earlier. But more than the promise, he says that he's a meek king. This is a paradox. It's an oxymoron. A meek king? Kings aren't meant to be meek. But what kind of king is this? That word meekness, it simply means that he would not resist. How can he not resist? That's what kings do. He has the power to resist. But the prophecy of this kind of king, he is the king that would not resist. He's the one that says the meek shall inherit the earth. He is the one who said, come unto me and I will give you rest. He is meek. What kind of king is this? He is the one that says he would not resist. He would not resist when Caiaphas would embarrass him. He would not resist. When the soldiers came to arrest him, he would not resist. When Pontius Pilate gave out the execution, he would not resist. When they put him on the cross, he would not resist. When they put the crowns on his head, with thorns he would not resist and when he was on the cross when it was time to die he would not resist but thanks be to God that he got in the grave Friday and early Sunday morning he would not resist from getting up from his grave thank God we serve a God in Jesus who is the king who would not resist on this Palm Sunday March 2021, Jesus, he's marching into our cities, in our communities, in our country still. And there's not an apartment, there's not a home, there's not a dormitory, there's not a shelter. That he is not entering into our worlds, knocking at the door of our lives. He enters into our world, into our cities, knocking at the door. But the painful reality is that as we look at Revelations 3, that as he comes, he says, I come in knocking at the door. I'm just waiting on you to answer and let me in. He wouldn't resist knocking, but the fact is that there will be some people that even as he will not resist, there will be some people that will resist Jesus. Even though he comes knocking, asking to enter into our lives, there will be some people who will ignore the knock at the door. You want to know something painful about this celebration on this day. That as Jesus is entering into the city, pronouncing himself as the king, boldly proclaiming he is the king and he is the Lord. While there are thousands, hundreds of people outside screaming out, cheering for him. There were people on the next road going on as business as usual. Some people in the marketplace, some children are playing in the street. Some women are carrying on the <laughs> weekly gossip. Some men are trying to trade goods. And while they're going on with their day-to-day -day business, there's a celebration. There was a parade celebrating that the king has entered in. Even on a day like this, as we celebrate Palm Sunday, that the king is here and he's the king that would not resist, the king that carries our burden, the king that finds use, the king that keeps his promise. There are people who are entertaining themselves in other areas in things that are meaningless and useless. Don't be the person that misses out 
on the message of the king that has come, who has entered in, who is knocking at the door of your life. Don't be so distracted by your personal ambitions, by your economic status, trying to achieve some goals that you miss out on the knock. Even right now today, the Lord is knocking on someone's heart saying, let me in. Don't resist me. Let me in. That's the kind of king he is. The king who would not resist. He continues to knock at the doors of our hearts even when some of us reject him. What kind of king is this? While Jesus is on the road, the streets filled with peasants, people who are on the margins of life, People who are stricken by poverty, those who are fishermen, throwing their raggedy clothes on the stone ground. While they're outside, they're cutting down branches, cutting out trees, and they're screaming out, Hosea, nah, Hosea, nah, screaming out, save now, Lord. Save now, Lord. I'm done with the sermon now. <laughs> They're outside waving their branches, screaming out, save now, Lord. What kind of king is this? I have to tell you one last thing, what kind of king this is. Save now, Lord. You know that the name, the word king, it means the one who is able. While he is walking down the road, pronouncing himself as king, he is the one who is able. And the people in the crowd, they're screaming out, save now, Lord, save now, Lord. I've always wondered who was in that crowd. I wonder maybe it was blind Bartimaeus in that crowd screaming out, save now, Lord. Maybe it was that woman who had the issue of blood for more than 12 years screaming out, save now, Lord. Maybe it was that man who was at the pool of, who, who, who couldn't walk for 38 years who's screaming out, save now, Lord. Maybe it was the man that had the oppressed demon that would not let him talk now that he has a voice screaming out, save now, Lord. Why were they were screaming out? They were saying, save now, Lord. Why? Because, Lord, you know what you did for us. You saved me. And if anybody ought to be screaming out, save now, Lord, it ought to be the people that have been saved, the people that have been delivered. Hosanna, save now, Lord. They scream out, Hosanna, because he is the one who is able. What kind of king is this? He's the king that can find use in those who seem to be useless. Save now, Lord. What kind of king is this? He's the king that can bear your burdens. Hosanna. Save now, Lord. What kind of king is this? He's the king that keeps his promises even when it seems like they can't be fulfilled. Save now, Lord. What kind of king is this? But more importantly, he is the king who is able. And whenever we look through the book of Matthew, you can go down the road. We see him as the one who is able. In chapter 1, you saw him. He is able to be born without the assistance of a man. He is able. You saw where he was able to evade the hands of tyranny and he would go down to Egypt. He is able. In chapter 3, you saw how he went and evaded the stigma of being humble. He is able. When he was baptized by his cousin John the Baptist, he is able. In chapter 4, you saw him when he would go into the wilderness and fight against Satan and he would resist temptation. He is able. Chapter 5, 6, and 7, as he teaches us how to speak to the Father and access him and he would challenge the mind of the peasant people, we see he is able. In chapter 8, you saw when he 
was on the boat and his disciples were in a storm and he was at the bottom of the boat sleeping. He got up from that bottom of the boat and spoke to the wind and his disciples said, what kind of who's a reject? He said, go back and tell John, the blind see, the lame walk, the dead are raised from the grave, and the good news is proclaimed. He is able, chapter 12, when his disciples were hungry, he shows them that he is the Lord of the Sabbath. Chapter 13, he gives the parable of the kingdom of God. Chapter 14, his disciples are in the middle of another storm, and he's walking on the water, and they thought it was a ghost. He uses the same same language as Exodus 3 it is I I am he is able chapter 15 where he feeds the hungry multitude chapter 16 who do men say that I am is the question that he asked Simon Peter you are the Christ and on that confession I will build my church he is able chapter 17 when he takes the 18 Peter James and John up to the mountain and he would show himself as he is in his splendid glory you see him he is able chapter 19 he gives the parable in chapter 18 that he would leave the 99 behind and go after the one he is able chapter 19 where he receives the children and says come to the kingdom just like little children he is able chapter 20 when he gives sight to the blind he is able and here we are in 2021 he's still is able he's able to keep you from falling falling away and falling apart he is able the one to wipe away your tears he is able he's able to hold you in the midnight hour he is able if you've been falling down before he can pick you up he is able if anybody ought to say Hosanna it ought to be the people who've been saved who been blood washed by his blood anybody know who he is he is able i don't know what he's done for you he's able to bring families back together he is able he's able to mend broken relationships he is able you got to call on the name of jesus i didn't mean to go this far but when i think about the kind of king he is i can't help but to say Hosanna, save now, Lord. I know what you've done for me. I got to say, Hosanna, you are able to fix brokenness. You are able today to mend hurt families. Thank you, Lord. Hosanna, I know what kind of king he is. I don't know who you are. I don't know what you're going through, but you ought to just grab a hold of yourself and just say, Hosanna, save now, Lord. You don't have to tell me what you're going through. Just say, Hosanna, save now, Lord. He's able today. He's able today. Yes. Yes, he is. He's able. What kind of king is this? He's the king that can bring about use those who are deemed useless. He's the king that can bear our burdens. He's the kind of king that can keep his promises. But he's able to be that kind of king because he is able. Maybe someone who's watching right now, you may be sitting on the throne of your life. <laughs> And you're trying to lead and direct your living. Only to find out, hmm, you're an insufficient leader of your own life. There's some territory and some terrain that are beyond your abilities. On this Palm Sunday, we celebrate our Lord Jesus as King as he's coming to the world but who's a available and accessible to come into our lives, come into our hearts, and rearrange our circumstance and our world. Our first invitation to you, whoever's watching, if you don't know Jesus as Lord and Savior, 
We want to invite you this morning to invite him into your heart. If you've never said, Jesus, come into my heart as Lord and Savior, we're talking to you. Or maybe you're someone that's saying, you know what, I've given my life to Christ, but I've strayed away. I've been distracted like the crowd in the other street and deterred away from reading scripture like I ought to, don't pray like I need to. But Jesus says that I'll never leave you or forsake you. But in him saying that, he knew that there's a great possibility that we might leave or forsake him. But the good news is because he never left, that means you have an opportunity to come back to him. Or maybe you're someone that's saying, you know what, I'm a Christian, but I don't have a church home. You already know if it's right to be in the church, it's wrong to be outside of the fellowship. Even though we're not worshiping corporately, you can still be a part of the church family. So if that's you, you don't have a relationship with Christ, you strayed in your faith or you don't have a church home, we're talking to you. And if you're watching, click the join button. Click that button. The choir is going to sing because the Lord right now is waiting on you. Amen. to extend and yours to accept. He is here waiting on you, knocking at the door of your heart. Ours to extend and yours to accept. Let us now prepare to worship the Lord through our giving because God loves what a cheerful giver. All right, family, let's prepare to worship the Lord through our giving. You have your gifts prepared, locked, loaded, and ready. Wherever you are, let's wave them in the air. Wave them to the Lord. Let's say it together. Where there's a temple, there's a need. Where there's a need, there's provision. Where there's provision, there's God. Where there's God, he shall supply in miraculous ways. It's offering time. Praise the Lord. Church family, we have a lot of awesome events coming up. Stay tuned to hear more. Now let's see what's new beyond the pew. If you've joined the church from December 2020 to March this year, we invite you to register for New Members Meet and Greet Friday, April 16th. RSVP at newmember.tcww.org. Coffee and Christ is a Church Without Walls Bible study. You'll personally engage with sermons I preach on Sunday to discover for yourselves how to authentically live out what the Bible says it means. The name Coffee in Christ expresses the relaxed and conversational small group atmosphere. Grab a cup of coffee, or tea, and join us on Tuesdays at 7 o'clock p.m. Small groups, be encouraged. My friend has a beautifully manicured lawn with stepping stones to keep pedestrians off her grass. And each stone is strategically placed to form a guided path from the street curb to her front door. I invite you to join me for the Master Life Study, Order My Steps, a six session study that will empower you to walk the path ordered by God. Our Father has graciously chartered the path for each of our lives, and He wants to guide us safely 
through the valleys, over the mountains, and down the path to righteousness. If you want to live a life that is guided by the Good Shepherd, then join me beginning March 20th for the study Order My Step. Visit women.tcww.org. I look forward to taking the journey with you. on the road to resurrection, the path that Jesus took to change the world. On March 28th, Palm Sunday, we'll celebrate the triumphant entry of Jesus Christ into Jerusalem. Monday through Friday, we'll share moments to remember. The day of testing, teaching, transition, trials, and then the day of tragedy on Friday, April 2nd before our Good Friday worship service as we remember the ultimate sacrifice that Jesus made on the cross at Calvary. An early Sunday resurrection morning, we'll celebrate our risen Savior on Easter Sunday. Be sure to invite your friends and family, especially those who do not know Jesus Christ. Let's travel together on the road to resurrection. Amen. Look this way. Let me bless you on this Palm Sunday as we prepare to leave. Thank you, Ralph, for reminding us and teaching us the meaning of the king and the Lord's kingship, that he can use the unusable and that the Lord is able. And so we thank God for that on the day. What a word to be reminded uh, during times like these. I want to encourage you over these next weeks that you would get vaccinated. And uh, the more people that get vaccinated, the sooner we can gather in this church. Uh, we're closer to returning than we thought now. And if we can get vaccinated, amen, yeah. Uh, and when we can sit together, and I'm not trying to be funny, I mean this, where we can cough and nobody gets nervous, or sneeze and nobody gets nervous, and uh, get vaccinated. One thing you know, vaccination is not a 100% guarantee, even with masks, that you won't contract COVID. However, uh, by the grace of God, it will keep you from being hospitalized. It will not uh, cause you to uh, uh, succumb to death. And so for that, we're grateful. And for that, we're grateful. Uh, I think so often that um, if we could do what has been done in less than 100 days, what would have happened if we had had responsible moral leadership a year ago in this country. Uh, we could have mitigated that virus in Washington State and people could have continued. But that's a beautiful, it is a illustration of what happens when you have unethical, immoral, and um, a leadership in any place, whether it's in government or even in the church. And so we have to be the moral conscience for our community to remind people why we do what we do and why we wait the way that we wait until. And I thought it necessary to say that today, uh, especially on this day after we've been reminded that God is able. He has given us great medical minds, medical minds that, that as people talk about believe the science, but also believe in the God who gives the gift to people to use science. 
and to uh, find this, these vaccines. And now, of course, the challenge is that we have and in, in our city already the five strands of the new viruses. And so we want to get vaccinated as fast as we can. I was saying this to some people, and, and they uh, uh, not arguing with me, but they didn't agree with me, my position on being vaccinated. And so they began to talk about um, the uh, Tuskegee experiment and things like that and people that were involved. And, and uh, they were talking about nurses that were involved who happened to be black. I didn't know about this. I, I would, I'm not looking for a way not to get vaccinated. And I just simply said to them these words. I said, don't confuse the nurse with the epidemiologist. We're talking about two different things now. And so uh, uh, I pray that those of you who are Christian and you say that God is able, understand that God uses people that we might deem unusable to create and make available for us what we need so that we're able to say, God sure is able. And uh, so get vaccinated. I know you will. And, uh, and I can see it already. We, we go in and we get vaccinated. And we're that much closer uh, to returning where we can worship together. I know you're ready to return. I certainly am ready to return. I want to thank you as a congregation for being so very faithful. These have been very challenging times. And I'm not just speaking for our church. I know I'm speaking for many, many pastors now. Uh, so often, all through the week, I've been asked, Pastor, when are we returning? And I've said, you know, we could return on Easter, as a lot of people, we could return, we could come on Sunday. But I couldn't live with the fallout of that. We've already seen what happened again, with an unethical leadership in our state, just open things up. And right when we we're balancing things up, numbers started going up. We don't, we don't want to be the cause. As Christians, we want to be part of the cure. I've been accused over the a year of being a man that has no faith, they said, that if I trusted God and I loved God, then I would allow my people to come back I don't know where we confuse foolishness with faith. Uh, um, you know, you'll hear people say that, well, you know, if you believe in an omnipotent God, but omnipotent doesn't mean that God can do anything. God will not go against his own morals. God will not go against his own logic. You know, you hear people, when you get in these discussions, well, if God is able, then he can, he can fit a circle in a square. See, this is foolish talk. Uh, this is silly, sophomoric conversation. And never get into a discussion with people who are thinking like that because they don't understand the character of God. Um, Exodus 34, 6 and 7 reminds us the Lord is compassionate and he is gracious and he's slow to anger and forgiving and abounding with love. That's the character of God. That's why we recite in our church, I believe in God, the Father, almighty maker of heaven and earth. Because it reminds us that we worship a loving, compassionate God who loves us so much that in the middle of our own mess, he has not given us not just one vaccine. This is fat. This is Fantastic. Imagine what our children are going to be saying in the years when they, get, when they are leading our church to say, I lived through a pandemic where I watched God when we needed a vaccine, not give one. Then he gave two, then three, then four, then five. And now they even talk about, I said, these people over in Oxford, they something else. We are now looking at the possibility of uh, mitigating this virus by using a nasal spray. Nobody but a God can do that. The preacher said he is able. So let's let God do what God needs to do. And then we partner with God and do what we need to do. And then when we get back in this place, 
I think on that Sunday we we don't we don't structure anything. We just show up and just shout for our time that's here. And then when we're done, we'll go back and then we'll resume. We'll resume the next week and uh, get some shout in. I tell you, I, I look forward to that. So I thought I needed to say that to our congregation and to our friends who are listening, not just in America, but globally. The Lord is working. He, he's, he's, he's still on the throne. He hasn't abdicated it. He's in control. And we'll be back. We'll be back. And we're closer to being back. I thought we'll get back in January, to be honest, January 22. Uh, that's what it looked like. And now every week, uh, it was good news, wasn't it, when we heard uh, the new administration say that we are. And then to hear uh, these medical doctors said, and when the doctors get surprised, you know it's time to shout. And they're saying we are, we are much further along than even we estimated. We are so much further along. And that is good news. And so let's do our part. We've learned that in stewardship, didn't we? That God's the owner, we're the manager of the resources of life that God has given to us. And that is in stewardship, since God is the owner, then what we do is partner with God. As God does his part and then we do our part. And when that comes together, you always got good results. So with that said, look this way. Let me bless you. I look forward to worshiping with you all this week. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face smile upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift the light of his countenance upon you and grant you his peace. And may the Lord bless you when you go out and come in, when you rise up early and settle late in your labor and in your leisure and your laughter. And in your tears until that day when we shall stand at the feet of Jesus where there is no sunrise or sunset. I love you, church. God bless you. I can hardly wait to see you. Amen.